Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Let's go through the steps on how to download Ubuntu server off the internet completely free. We're gonna download that ISO and then we're gonna boot it and install it in a VMware environment. So you can actually build a VM running Ubuntu. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're gonna to look at how to download and install Ubuntu server and get it up and running in a VMware environment. Uh, we're gonna be doing this within our VMware ESXi vCenter environment, but it's very, very easy to do. So we're gonna jump onto my computer right now and we're gonna go through those steps. We are running uh, Mac OS, we're doing this on a Mac, so I've opened up my browser, which is Google Chrome. If you're on a Windows computer, uh, the process is really the same. Just go ahead and open up your uh, browser and we're gonna type in here, download Ubuntu server and press enter. Uh, select the very top option, if that's the correct one, it should be ubuntu.com and it's gonna say download Ubuntu server. So go ahead and select download, making sure that this is Ubuntu server. The version of course will be different if you're watching this in the future. If the download should automatically start in the background uh, and let's just wait for that ISO to download and we will check back once that is complete. So Ubuntu server has now downloaded. I've actually now copied it to an external uh, hard drive space that I've got and the installer is right here. So this is the server edition of Ubuntu. And now what we're gonna do is we wanna now log in to our vCenter or directly into an ESXi host. So we are going to log in as root right here and into our ESXi host. So you will see I do have some existing VMs already in here, um, but obviously we now want to create a brand new VM with Ubuntu server. So first thing that we need to do is we need to get the ISO uploaded into the data store. So this is the data store that you've got configured. So under the storage area right here, you'll see that I have two data stores. Um, it doesn't matter which one you upload it to, but ideally the data store that contains most of your VMs, your data, if you have a location for your software, things like that. I've got my primary data store here being prod NAS. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this data store and say browse. So within the prod NAS, you'll see it's a directory structure of everything that is now sitting on that prod NAS. If you don't already have a folder like this, I would re maybe recommend creating a folder called ISOs or software or something that is relevant to you. And inside this folder, we've got a number of things already in here, including my Ubuntu server right here. So if you have not got the ISO already in here, you need to upload it. So all you really do is you select the ISOs folder, whatever folder you've called, say upload. Now, because I'm on a Mac, I've opened up the finder window. If you're on Windows, you'll obviously be presented with Windows Explorer, but really all you do now is you navigate to that ISO file. So you select it, you click on open and it'll start to upload it. Now, because I've already um, got it inside my data store, I'm not going to do this, but it will take a little bit of time um, depending again on your network speed. But then once it's done, the ISO will show up in here like it does right here. So back into the virtual machines area here, we're now gonna select create or register VM. We're going to select create a new virtual machine because that is what we are doing. Now, what do you want this VM to be called? So you can really call it whatever you want. For the purpose of this demo, we're gonna call it Ubuntu test. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. Give it a meaningful name. Obviously the name of the VM that you actually want to be using. Compatibility, uh, you're gonna select the version of ESXi that you have running in your environment. So if you have a mix of 6.7, which is the version that I've got, and you've got other ESXi hosts that are running on 6.5 or 6 or 5.5, then selecting 6.7 will not allow you to move that VM to a host that is running an earlier version of this uh, ESXi version. So select the version that is um, compatible with all of your ESXi hosts. So in my case, it's 6.7 because all my hosts are 6.7. Guest OS, you select Linux. Guest OS version, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and select Ubuntu Linux 64-bit because that's the version that we are selecting. So this is just the wizard and it's essentially going to provide approximate default for the operating system installation. Next, select the data store where you actually want to build and, and save that VM. So where is that VM going to be living? I'm gonna select that I want it in my prod NAS data store. So as you see, this is now predefined a number of things based on those standards that we selected. It's already allocated a one 
uh, CPU, one gig of RAM and 16 gig hard drive. You can go and change this. So I'm gonna say I want now my hard drive to be 80 gig and leave it. You can increase the resources at a later time if you so choose to. The next important thing is under CD DVD drive one, you now are going to point this drive. Essentially it's a virtual CD DVD drive to that ISO that we have just uploaded. So under here, you've got a drop down, which we're gonna select and we select data store ISO file. It will then prompt you for the data store browser. And now we're gonna to navigate to that ISO that we just uploaded. So prod NAS and in here I've got Ubuntu live server right here. So select that, ensure that this is ticked on connect so that when the VM starts up, that ISO is mounted automatically and then we can go and install it. Next, gives you a bit of a summary of what's going on and ensuring that the CD drive is under there. So it's pointing to the correct ISO and we can now select finish. Okay, so now the shell, essentially the shell of my VM is created, which is right here, Ubuntu test. And what we can now do is we can now go ahead and power it on. I'm gonna power it on and then connect to my console window so that I can see what's going on during the install. So the ISO has been detected, it's been mounted and the pre-installation of Ubuntu is starting. So this initial process may take a little bit of time. It's gonna ask you for your language. We're gonna leave this as English and you can press enter. It's gonna let you know what it's doing. So I'm gonna continue without updating or you can update to the newer installer if you so choose to. Now you can do that right now, um, but I'm just gonna leave it as is, continue without updating, give you a little bit of a confirmation and then you can select done. I'm using DHCP, so I'm not gonna be allocating a static IP address for this. So it's already found a uh, DHCP server that's gonna allocate a relevant IP. You can go and change this later on if you so choose to. I don't have a proxy, so I'm gonna leave that blank. If you do have one, enter it in, and I'm just gonna leave that as the default. So you will remember that we did allocate 80 gig of storage for this VM. So uh, if you're happy with that, you can use the entire disk or you can actually shrink that uh, and use only a portion of that disk right now. But we're gonna leave that as the default and use the full 80 gig that we've allocated. So it's letting you know how it's gonna partition it, essentially create a couple of partitions there and done. And now just a confirmation that now the process is going to start. So the disk that I've selected will be formatted. There's no data on there anyway. And we can now select continue. Now prompted to enter our name. What do you want the server to be called? Now again, try to make this the same. I like to have consistency between how the VM has been named in VMware and how it's going to be named on the server side. So I'm just gonna leave this as Ubuntu test. I'm going to pick a username, I'm going to leave it as my name, and then we're going to allocate a password, okay, and done. Do you want to install OpenSSH server or not? Uh, we're going to leave that blank. We don't want to do that right now. So you're now presented with a few different options to add some additional uh, snaps in the server environment, essentially additional add-ons and software that you can now go and configure. If you do want any of this stuff installed right now, you can do that right now or you can just leave a blank and just go done. Uh, you can go and install these at any time later on. Okay, so now it is installing the system. You'll see that it's installing the kernel and it's gonna take a little bit of time to go and configure your Ubuntu server. So the installation now is complete. It's gonna ask me for a reboot. So let's go ahead and reboot. Now, because the VM itself, the actual config of the VM has that ISO mounted, what we're gonna to need to do is we need to shut down this VM and uh, unmount it from the settings and then power it on again. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we're just gonna select that VM and click on power off and yes. Okay, now we're gonna right click on it, go into edit settings. Under here, we're just gonna move it back to host device and we can just untick it, save. So now that is now unmounted, so I can now power it back on, go back into my console. So we now want to log in with the credentials that we set up uh, during the install. So your username and then the password and we are in. But that is now a fully operational uh, version of Ubuntu. So you can go and navigate all of your directory structure, uh, create a whole bunch of stuff and really learn the CLI for Ubuntu in your uh, environment. If you do want to install a graphical user interface, you can do that, but just be aware that you will require more resources. Uh, there are a few simple commands that you can run right from within here to go and install and configure that. 
But for now, we're just gonna leave it as is because the CLI is, is essentially what I need to be using and what I'm gonna be using in my demo, in my lab environment here. And generally it's what I use in the corporate environment as well. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you were able to install uh, the operating system and it is working well in your VMware environment. Or maybe you're gonna be trying it right now, but I would love it if you commented below. Let me know how you went and your thoughts and your questions. As well as that, please like this video. Always remember to like my videos, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to Digital by Computing. Click on that notification bell for you to be up to date and keep updated as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.